Hi, I'm Roisin and I'm here with MNIV and we're here with the female dragons from Dragon Zed, Eleanor, Mac- Eleanor McAvoy, Chanel McCoy and Alison Kowser here at ITLG Young Innovators event in Shannon Airport. Tell us a bit about yourselves. Well, hello girls. Thank you so much for having us. It's very exciting to be here. Um, so Chanel McCoy is my name. Um, I'm from Loch Grey in County Galway and I am involved in our family pharmaceutical business. So we, my father um, set the business up 40 years ago as a veterinary company and I joined the business 18 years ago and dad and I set up the medical side of the business. Um, so we developed generic products, which is kind of your copycat drugs, um, when the patent expires, we, we launch the copycat. We now, uh, luckily in the medical business, we're in 96 markets uh, around around the world. Um, we have over 500 people in our plant in Loch Ray in County Galway. And, um, you know, a fantastic journey for me, you know, going in at 23 years old to, to drive the medical business. Um, wasn't sure kind of really what faith my dad had in me. Um, you know, but... It, you know, at the end of the day, it is all about kind of, you know, your passion, your perseverance. Very important to have a plan. You know, where do you want to go and how are you going to get there? Um, you know, and what is kind of, what, what, is the, what does the end goal look like? You know, what, what will success look like? Um, you know, and, and that's really, you know, I suppose how we drove the business um, over, over the years um, was just having a plan, sticking to that plan. But also now and again, allowing yourself to deviate from the plan because things will come your way, opportunities will come your way and you have to, you know, have that flexibility to kind of go and take opportunities as they as they come along. Hi, my name is Alison Kaiser, and uh, at the moment uh, our main business is East Coast Bakehouse, which is a biscuit manufacturing business based in Drogheda. We have 65 people working with us now and uh, we are working to change the fact that at the moment 98% of biscuits on your supermarket shelves are imported. Uh, so we've now put together a range of, of biscuits that uh, Irish customers, Irish biscuit lovers seem to enjoy. Um, we're also exporting to 20 different countries and we're working on some great new opportunities um, in innovating biscuits and taking them out of the old, boring, regular stuff that we're used to. We're putting protein in biscuits, we're reducing the sugar and we hope to produce products that still taste great um, but that deliver much better nutrition. So that's part of a a lot of work that the team has been working on now for three years. Um, One of the things that I really enjoy about work is the fact I work as part of a team. Um, Some of the people on our team I've worked with for nearly 15 years. So you begin to really trust the people that you're working with. And I think as an entrepreneur that is hugely important that you have a bunch of people around you that uh, when you have a bad day maybe they're having a good day and that that brings everybody together and and ultimately makes sure that you can all keep going because there are real challenges to running your own business. Um, there are also real opportunities and, and, and great days. So it's a question of keeping the head up, even when the difficulties happen, uh, keeping your eye on the prize. And, and the great thing about running your own business is that uh, you make the decisions. Um, that's a really scary place to be in, but it's a really exciting place to be in too. Hello, and my name is Eleanor McAvoy, and can I say it's really exciting to be interviewed by the youth media team. <laughs> and you're doing a really good job. So, like Chanel... I was 23 when I started out in my journey as well. And for me, my first business was vending, which was cans of Cokes and bars of chocolate, cups of coffee. And that business was sold in 2001. And then from there, I went on to telecommunications, which was the beginning of the mobile phone industry. And now my current business is budget energy, which is electricity. So most important lesson, I suppose, I would say from the journey I've been on is Business is business regardless of the product. You just have a different learning with each one. And whatever experience you get from the first one actually is still relevant, even though the business is different. And I look at every business plan that I started out with. The end journey so far has been lucky for me and worked out well, but the actual journey was never what I planned. So I think one of the most overriding lessons is for any business is you plan as much as you can, you think it's going to go a certain way, but the journey is always different. So you have to be resilient and you have to recognize how to change with that journey as opposed to, oh no, I thought it was going this way. If it doesn't go this way, it's wrong. Actually, there is no right way and no wrong way. And at the end of the day, it's great fun. Every time I start a new business, I think I'm 20 again. So I definitely feel a new one coming on. (laughs) 
How does it feel to be called a dragon? Um, well, um, when I was announced as a dragon first um, for the first series, my husband uh, sent out a tweet to all his followers, which he absolutely delighted in, in sending. And he tweeted, I've been married to a dragon for 20 years, and now the rest of the world knows. <laughs> so I've kind of been used to being called a dragon for most of my life, so it doesn't bother me at all. Um, for me, I joined, um, when I joined Dragon's Den um, in 2016. Um, so, uh, so Sony Music actually owned Dragon's Den, and it's franchised out to... And I checked the last time, 28 countries around the world. And Ireland was the first country uh, globally to have three female dragons. And I was that third female dragon that came on, which I was very proud to be. Um, you know, but look, it's, it is a fantastic opportunity to be a dragon because you have the ability to give people a leg up in their career, um, you know, to maybe help them scale their business, help them start their business. Um, and, you know, it's so interesting because so many fantastic ideas come into the den that you have an opportunity to, to invest in to help these people, you know, and make a bit of money as well um, on the side. So um, I absolutely love, uh, love being a dragon. Um, yeah, I agree. I absolutely loved it as well. And it was, it was pretty cool to do TV. That's the other thing, by the way, about being an entrepreneur. So many things have happened in my life that would not have happened to me. I get to meet really cool people like these two girls here, you know, and it's it's brilliant. Like it's 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 always been in the it club. It's cool, really cool. But I think the likes of Dragons Den, you're really lucky to have to watch it on TV. We never had anything like that. I think it's a little bit like the X factor for business. Uh, so all five of the dragons are here today, so it's obviously something you're all passionate about. What brings you here? Um, you know, for me, um, anything to do with helping, empowering, encouraging young people to be more innovative, you know, I am, I am there, you know, without, without hesitation. And, you know, innovation is in every industry um, across the world because, you know, we are so technology-driven in, in every industry. Um, you know, and it, yes, it doesn't have to be just technology to be innovative in. There's, there's lots of stuff outside technology to, to be innovative in. So, you know, I don't know, would I be here if it was a, a bunch of grown-up adults? I don't know. I just have this real affection for helping young children and, uh, and, and young teenagers. I think it's a great position for me to be in to try and encourage and, and, and help a little bit. Um, well, I have two teenage girls, age 14 and 17, and uh, really, I think that is the future. You guys are the ones that are going to be out there building the businesses of the future. And I think us as dragons, uh, we're here to learn. We're here to learn what you guys have to tell us about the future, uh, what you want, what, you, what you're going to buy, what services you're going to buy, what products you want. So for me, I come to these type of events to learn from you. Uh, and I know I'm going to be, this afternoon when we see your pictures, we're going to be really inspired about what the future is about. Well, one of the biggest reasons that I am here today and I do anything around beginners, I went to school, I didn't go to college, and genuinely one of the reasons I thought I would have to create my business is that I kind of knew I thought I could do something, but I didn't think anyone would give me a job high enough the ranks to make a difference. So I thought the only way to do it was myself. So I always try and put a personal face on it in terms of, no, I wasn't a genius at school. No, I didn't have all the answers. And yes, anybody can do it. So that's my always my message. Why is it important to specifically target young people like ourselves in this way? It's a good question. Um, because, you know, we're very aware, I suppose, as um, leaders of a company or entrepreneurs that... You know, not only will you guys be the future workforce um, of companies that we're involved in, and you know, as, as Alice has said, it's very important to stay close to to knowing you know the younger generation very well in terms of their needs. But you know, you're also the consumers and our customers who who will buy the products we're we're involved in. Um, you know, so it is very much kind of a, a, a learning um, as well. You know, to to be here. But. 
Um, well, I suppose we're here today, and all of you here are today, to talk about innovation. And the pace of innovation has never, ever been as fast as it is now, today and tomorrow, and, and, and as we move through uh, the coming years. And what really interests me is that you guys have absolutely no fear of innovation. Uh, in my business and in, in other businesses that I'm involved in, uh, change is scary. Uh, people recoil a little bit when you say, you know, let's throw it all up in the air and start again and make, th make things happen in a different way. But what's really inspiring about you guys is that you are not afraid of change. And I think that is the way the world is, 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 is heading. Uh, and we need to be part of that. We need to, uh, I suppose, be part of a day like today that just shows that there, there is no... Um, there's a phrase that I, I'm reading a book at the moment, which I think we should all read. It's called Think the Unthinkable. Uh, and your generation are the ones that are out there thinking the unthinkable on a, on a daily basis. And that is something that is going to, frankly, uh, save the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, actually doing these kind of events, and sometimes you're asked to do them, and you say, "Oh my God, how am I going to, how am I going to twist my my world around to fit it in?" And you have to organize and pack and jump in a plane and do whatever you need to do to get here. But I will say, ironically, you always get more than you give from these kind of events, and we go away refreshed with renewed thinking. And I think the more you give in life, the more you get back. That's how it works. Dragon's Den is gender balance, tipping in favour of women, which is great to see. Why is it important to have strong female role models like yourselves? Well, I do a lot of work on the whole area of encouraging women to take on positions of influence, both in business and politics and many other areas. And I think what we need to get our heads around and what we need to remember, I say this to a lot of young women particularly, is Women are not a minority, uh, and yet very often we have a mindset that tells us we are a minority. We may be a minority in, in particular areas like business and leadership, but I think the challenge is to show that if, that if you look at a panel, for example, at the moment on Dragon's Den, and we're all commenting about the fact that there's more women than men, I'm really looking forward to the day when we don't even have to comment on that, because that will be reality. So that's really my views on, on gender balance is that let's get to normal. Let's get to 50-50 and that will be normal. You know, I think for um, young girls going out into the workforce now, um, you know, that it's really important to work for companies that um, really uh, want a, a good gender balance in, in, in a company. You know, when you look at the FTSE 500 companies, only 5% of CEOs are women, you know, in those, in those companies. I mean, the figures are, are, are appalling and... 14% of FTSE boardroom seats in Ireland are filled by women. So we need, you know, we need to absolutely get a better um, gender balance. But and there are some fantastic companies out there who now have real kind of strategic goals of having a much better gender balance, and they will put the support network in place to get women up into senior management positions. Because the reality is, is you know, sometimes if you are going for that promotion to be a senior manager. You know, that can take longer hours, you know, you may have to travel, you know, that affects maybe the childcare, you know, you want maybe a bit of flexibility working, um, you know, so um, I think go and work for a company with the right culture that really wants to get women up into senior positions. Um, I remember 15 years ago, every single interview I did started with, what's it like to be a woman in business? And my staid answer was, because I really believed it then, I believe it now, I wasn't a woman in business, I was a person in business who happened to be a woman. Now I will say from a positive, positive point of view, I get asked that question less often. And actually, your generation is going to have a much better opportunity than we did, because of the changes, I suppose, that we've made. But at the same time, I don't think we can relax it. And it has to get to a stage, as Alison just said, where we no longer think about it. Thank you.